Welcome back. Coastal economies and properties are already at risk due to rising sea levels, and that includes the 60 miles of coastline in our area that's already seeing impacts. In fact, Governor McMaster recently said protecting the state's coastline is a top priority. In our first Saving the Carolinas report, News 13's Julie Calhoun tonight takes a look at the effects of sea level rise and how to prepare for the future. Sea levels have risen by more than a foot in the last century. In recent years, we're seeing more impacts day to day from king tides or just a heavy rain. This is 12th Avenue South. Even those events can devastate our dunes, which are the first line of defense to protect infrastructure and habitats. In a five year period, the amount of acreage the U.S. loss of coastal wetland is five times larger than the U.S. Virgin Islands per year. At this rate, by 2100, we'll lose an additional 16%. We talk about global change, and it's kind of an abstract concept, but it's sneaking in on us in these kinds of ways. Dr. Paul Gaze, marine science and geology professor at Coastal Carolina University, took me out to Wadey's Island, an undeveloped barrier island in Horry County with quiet beaches, mainly used for research by CCU students. The, the laser's taking so many shots it can see through the vegetation. They use a drone LIDAR system to map the dunes. The high resolution findings are able to show how healthy the dunes are, how well they'll hold up against the storm, and track the behavior of the coast. Another impact of rising sea levels, long-term beach erosion. At least half a billion dollars have been invested in beach renourishment projects for decades to protect the state's biggest economic commodity. By putting sand back in the system uh, basically sets the clock back. It gives you a little bit more time as it continues to waste away, but it's not dealing with the elevation of, of sea level rise. And, and you'll start to see this you know, uh, effect of, of flooding in from the backside in places like Cherry Grove and Garden City. And it's not just people who live on the beachfront that need to be concerned. Sea level rise coupled with warming temperatures and more intense storms is causing more inland flooding. Over time, you know, it's sort of this creeping effect is going to, you're going to start seeing um, more and more damage. Doug Marcy with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, is working on mapping sea level rise around the country for the National Climate Assessment, which updates sea level predictions every four to five years. The information can be used to help communities develop a strategy. Marcy worked with the city of Charleston. They're making good decisions based on that science and they can start to uh, amend things like their stormwater plan to include sea level rise for future you know, projects. Um, things like, you know, build, when we build new structures, including freeboard in there, one or two foot above the base flood elevation. The report also highlights using natural ways to save our shoreline, like oysters. The South Carolina Department of Natural Resources is working on that through its South Carolina Oyster Recycling and Enhancement Program, or SCORE. The agency has used more than 1,100 tons of oyster shells to create 225 reefs. Rachel Haas with the Coastal Conservation League works closely with DNR on the project. It's kind of a one-two punch where they're breaking up that energy and that wave energy um, and that's, that's preventing it from kind of hitting our coast and preventing erosion. And not only that, they increase the amount of salt marsh, which kind of does a similar thing to help with flooding. Haas says restoring oyster beds is even more critical now, with more development on the coast and rising sea levels. People, in some cases, put up hardened structures and rock walls, which aren't great because then that blocks that salt marsh and those oysters and kind of reverberates that wave energy. Um, instead of allowing the natural processes to happen. The National Climate Assessment reports the worst case scenario could be more than eight feet of global sea level rise by 2100. That same report says the current financial resources devoted to adapt to or mitigate coastal climate change impacts are insufficient to meet the projected challenges ahead. But Dr. Gay says change doesn't happen on the turn of a dime. The problem is we just don't have as much time as we used to. We, we can't wait 30 years. For News 13, I'm Julie Calhoun. And that was our first special report in our new Saving the Carolinas series. Tune in each Monday this month for more in-depth reports on how climate change is changing our area and what all is being done to protect it.